I decided recently that I wanted to unlock every single achievement in Space Engineers. Most of these are really easy, ranging from completing the game tutorial without dying, really, to spending five hours in the game's hardest difficulty. But the achievement that the fewest number of players have is playing it cool, an achievement awarded to the player after they complete the frostbite scenario. I'd attempted this achievement before, but let's just say it didn't go very well. So I decided that this time I would enlist the help of two of my Patreon and Discord members, Delta and Florius, in order to make getting this achievement easier. Little did we know, there is nothing easy about getting this achievement. There was only suffering. Oh, run away. Oh. <laughs> this is how I died last time. Ah! Ah, turret! There's a ah. turret! They shot on all the ah. uh, The other rover's gone, by the way. Oh my god, you're being missile. What a power kit. Ah, uh, there's drones. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. Oh my god. I'm sucking up a lot. Oh my god. Where are they oh. coming down again? Are those the drones? Those are missiles. Ah, uh, well, the tank drone's gone. Our journey begins on the planet Triton. After a short cutscene, we'd land and begin our mission to retrieve four data containers. I'm not actually sure why we were sent to collect the four data containers, as reading logs and listening to voice messages wasn't something my colleagues were interested in. There was an audio log, and I do always criticise this game for not having voice acting. However, these two seem to be having much more fun without me, so I'm going to join you on the fun. Yeah, because you're being boring and like actually reading when they could have just voiced all this stuff. They did. It's voiced. I was listening to it voiced. I'm just going to say people who read tutorials and I respect them. I'm just none of them. OK, we started out in a small compound with a rover and an objective to explore the surrounding area for supplies. We found a damaged rover with a turret on it, which from prior experience I knew would be very useful. So we repaired it with the materials we'd found from the surrounding area and took the rover with us. After exiting the compound, there was a small building ahead of us to explore. It was here we met our first enemy. Our first encounter with the drone went really well, as you can see here. Why is our turret not firing? Let me in! What the f***? Ah. These drones are suicidal. Let me in! Is the turret broken? Hmm, I wonder why the turret isn't shooting really makes you think. We grinded down all the drones that attacked us, scavenging the ammo off of them, which I'm sure will be very useful and we will definitely use many times in the future. In front of us there was a fork in the path, our objective was down the hill on the right, however there was a path up the mountain on the left. As a real gamer, I knew that wherever the game wanted me to go was wrong, so I led the group up the mountain to see what the scenario was hiding from us up there, and then I very promptly led them back down the mountain after forgetting to turn my handbrake on. Oh my god, it's rolling down the hill, I can't get into the cockpit. No! No! After getting back up the mountain in one piece, we were attacked once again by drones, but this time they were a little different. Oh, run away! Oh. <laughs> what the f is that? that was a suicide drone! This is how it's I died last time. Drone. Oh my god! <laughs> Oh my, look how close that landed. These were kamikaze drones. As you can see, these are certainly something, being both very fast and very destructive. And considering we only had a single Gatling turret, we had very little defense against them. Hopefully, we won't encounter these again anytime soon. However, as a quick tangent, if you enjoy destruction, how would you like to see me destroy an entire planet? When I hit 25,000 subscribers, I will do exactly that. So if you'd like to see that, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. The upcoming road was just wide enough to fit a rover on. Any mistake here would spell the end of the rovers we were driving. Fortunately for us, the drones weren't going to let us make that mistake. Oh my god. You're dead. Where are they oh. coming down again? Are those the drones? Those are missiles. Ah, uh, well, the tank drone's gone. Oh my god. 
<laughs> I got hit by three of those things. So, there goes our only defense against the drones. And probably more importantly, the road to get back. I'm sure it's fine though. Surely they won't send any more kamikaze drones after us, right? There was a communications facility on the top of the hill. And at that facility, we found another rover for us to use. On the back of it, there was this thing called the lockdown module, whatever that is. Presumably, we would need this for later. But... One of my colleagues on this adventure pressed the forbidden button. P. And that unlocked the landing gear, which held the lockdown module on the back of the rover. With no way of getting it back on the rover, we left it behind. Surely it can't have been that important, right? Regardless, we had this big new rover to replace the one we had lost earlier. Or at least I should say, we would have. <laughs> uh, the other rover's gone, by the way. After recovering and repairing our new rover, which seems to be a running theme at this point, we made our way back. Obviously, due to the incident earlier, we'd need to repair the road that got blown up. The drones, however, did not appreciate our attempt to repair their handiwork. We had no turrets to defend ourselves, so we were under constant bombardment. Welcome to hell. I don't know, I feel like none of us said it yet, but thank you for inviting me. This is a horrible scenario when I never, I never want to do this again. <laughs> During a short reprieve from attack, we added two turrets to the big rover we recovered. Finally, with a way to defend ourselves, we could progress without constant fear of being exploded. Which, you know, lasted about two minutes until we ran out of ammo. It is at this point I'd like to talk to you about hand weapons and space engineers. Quite simply, they suck. They have the effective range of five meters and the accuracy of a stormtrooper. On the other hand, the drones are deadly accurate at range, have magic AI powers to hit you, are armed with ship weapons which are way better than what we have, and when they lose their weapons or they run out of ammo, they simply crash into you instead. Also, there's turrets. Lesson 1 of Frostbite. Do not open any doors. You may think a door is an entrance to a building or a room. No. A door is somewhere for the creators of Frostbite to hide a turret behind. Turrets are fun. They are more accurate than the player can be, and they have way more health than them. So basically, if a turret sees you before you see it, you are dead. So, how many turrets do you think there are in this scenario? <sighs> in this instance, there was a turret behind the door here. When it opened, it immediately killed Delta and Florius, and started to take chunks out of the rover that was out of ammo. Fortunately for us, it was too distracted by destroying our hopes and dreams that I was able to grind down the turret and get some more ammo for our rovers. You know, once we've repaired it again, of course. After almost exactly two hours, we've reached our first objective, the old mining base. Lucky for us, the entrance to the old mining base was surrounded by turrets, which means the next few minutes would be a fun experience of shooting turrets that we can barely see with a rifle that can barely hit. Fortunately for us, using this predicament, we came up with a new strategy. I think it's out of ammo. Yeah, I think it's out of ammo too. Charge. There's another one. Oh, there's another one. Why shoot turrets when you can simply wait until they cannot shoot to you? Genius. We use this logic to solve many other problems on this map as well. For example, hypothetically, playing this map for so long that all the drones that you were supposed to fight over the course of it run out of battery and crash, which is something that definitely didn't happen to us. After liberating the base through a war of attrition, where we stood just behind a hill so a turret couldn't hit us, we entered the base. The base had lots of ores in containers, a refinery, and a mining rover that needed repairing. We put two and two together and began repairing the mining rover, presuming that we would need it later on. And I'm sure this mining rover will have a very long life of mining ahead of it. Do I even need to put foreshadowing on screen here? We noticed buildings down the hill from the mining base, and we made our way down there to investigate. Obviously, we were attacked by drones, but for once we weren't nuked or ran out of ammo, and we were actually able to defend ourselves. Finally, all that preparation had paid off, we discovered an entrance to an underground base, which we fortunately needed to excavate with our drill rover. But you know, we also had to leave our rovers outside as they couldn't fit in the door. So you know, so much for that preparation we'd gone through. Speaking of preparation, we'd spent half an hour getting the resources together to repair the mining rover. He's stuck. I wow, power a bit. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Luckily, we technically wouldn't need it from now on, but you know, Fun. We continued into the base on foot. Now, I won't bore you by showing us slowly taking out every single turret, of which there were many, and this time they were in the dark for extra fun. Now, whilst I'm complaining a lot here, I would just like to say I'm actually having a lot of fun at this point. Not being blown up and having to rebuild every few seconds was a bonus, but as we pushed further underground, it actually felt like we were getting somewhere. Sure, I was a little concerned that we were, let me check my watch, three hours into this adventure so far and hadn't found a single data container, but I'm sure that's fine. 
Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, whenever a video game directs you to go one way, know that it is your sworn duty as a gamer to go the opposite direction. Game developers love to hide the best loot in the darkest corners, so you need to explore every route, regardless of where you're meant to go. Ah, <sighs> someone at Keen has a real sick sense of humour. Underground we found a... <clears throat> as I was saying, underground we found a research facility. I'm sure there's lots of interesting lore and data pads scattered around this place. But, as I said earlier, Floris and Delta were too busy treating this like an MMO and hoovering up all the loot they could find. Also, while we're doing callbacks to the previous parts of the video, remember what I said about doors? There's a turret. <laughs> Why did you open this? <laughs> Just close it. You literally uh... killed me. Next to the research facility was the manufacturing line. And here you can see a door to the cargo bay to it. Now, a cargo bay sounds like a good place to store data containers, but unfortunately, we couldn't find a way into it. Due to our, shall we say, newfound hatred of doors, we've been grinding into any buildings we found, and this building was surrounded by a safe zone, so we couldn't do that. We presumed that we'd need to turn off the safe zone at some point, and with the big obvious elevator next to us, we presumed that would be where we needed to go next. So, remember that lockdown module? You know, the thing that was on the truck that we lost right at the beginning? This is where it needed to go. Just to put that into context, we would have had to go over the icy cliff face without getting nuked, take it all the way to the mining base whilst avoiding turret fire, bring it into the tunnel system we were currently in, which meant we'd have to refuel the mining rover to make a big enough hole to get the truck in here, and then we'd be able to plug it into here and then open the door. To put it simply, <clears throat> no. Luckily for us, there was another option. We can shut down the reactor or we can use the lockdown module. We could also lift the lockdown by causing the reactor to quote unquote, shut down. During this journey, everything we'd built so far had been blown up, critically damaged, or run out of power. So I'm pretty sure if there's one thing the three of us are qualified to do, it's shut down a reactor. Now remember kids, causing a nuclear meltdown can be done in three easy steps. Number one, turn off the reactor's coolant. Number two, turn off the control rods. Number three, increase the reactor's energy output. If you've done all those things correctly, congratulations, your reactor should now explode. Sarah is not reliable for any loss of hair, teeth or life caused by the following instructions. Also, like and subscribe for more tips. After causing a nuclear meltdown and potentially giving all of us lethal radiation poisoning, the manufacturing line still wasn't open. So we went further into the facility. Just ignore the fact that there's clearly a bridge from the research facility to the manufacturing line. It doesn't exist, I promise you. Your eyes are deceiving you. It's definitely not there. Here's a clip of me shooting a turret for 30 seconds on my way to the research archives. I don't really have anything to add here. Just be glad this isn't an unedited let's play, as there'll be a lot more of this. Speaking of which, and wow, this is an awful time for a transition. You can watch this whole thing, mostly unedited, on my second channel linked in the description below. As we journeyed deeper, we discovered many of the drones just sitting on the ground out of power. Presumably, as these drones only ran on battery power, we'd been playing long enough that they'd run out of it. Not that I'm complaining, we were almost four hours into this and we hadn't found a single data container yet. We did find a damaged rover on the way to the research archives, which we left here for now. However, the damaged rover had something very special on it. Missiles. When Floris had been hoovering up all the loot, he'd found a rocket launcher. Now, we finally had missiles to use with it. It was finally time for some payback. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Owned. It's there. Oh, that felt good. It was there. Oh, no! You whiffed it. Yeah, so that was the last rocket we had. Which is, you know, unfortunate, as the next part of the scenario was hell. Imagine, if you will, a large open room. No cover. Multiple turrets. A rover with a Gatling turret on it, driving around. And then, when you finally cleared out all the turrets and the rover, guess who's back? Ah, uh, there's drones. But it was all worth it. After we cleared out the turrets, after we cleared out the drones, we finally found them. Data container. One data container here and two data containers close from here. Not one, not two, but three data containers. Now, if you can count to four, you might notice a small problem with this. But please, let us have this victory. We've been playing for almost four hours at this point, and many rovers and many deaths later, we'd finally found the thing we were looking for. And luckily for us, a very handy rover was available in this room for us to use to transport the data containers. However, it was then we realized a problem. 
Where's the other one then? Oh, wait. The other one must be in the other place, the manufacturing thing. So we have actually found them all. We just couldn't get into manufacturing. We set up the transport and loaded it with the three data containers we had found. All we needed to do now was find the one that we had missed. Oh, no! So, I found where we needed to go. After crossing the really difficult and not obvious to find whatsoever bridge to manufacturing, we collected the final data container with one of the forklifts we found earlier. We also repaired that damaged rover we found earlier with the missiles, and we brought it with us. Which, funnily enough, made it really easy to deal with all the turrets we'd bypassed earlier. You know, instead of wasting all those rockets. However, all of us had a sense that something bad was going to happen. First of all, we needed to get the data containers back to the landing pad. That meant going back outside. We'd been underground for a while now, but we hadn't forgotten the horror and destruction the drones had wrought on us. What if a drone damaged the rover with the trailer so we couldn't get the data containers back? What if a kamikaze drone blew up the data containers? And most importantly, what would be waiting for us when we finally got back? When we got back outside, we were able to summon a friendly drone to support us, which made us a little bit more comfortable. But it meant that all we had to defend ourselves was one AI drone and one turret on my rover. And then they came. Hopefully they're not bombing drones. Can you imagine how stupid that would be? No, they're rocket drones. Keep moving. I'm stuck. Jesus Christ. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. However, it would prove not to be the drones that would be our greatest obstacle here. It would instead be gravity. Quite simply, only my rover was able to get up the mountain. I had to use my rover to push the rover with the trailer and the forklift all the way up the incline. Not to mention Delta's impeccable driving skills. This was quite literally the final push. The final incline we needed to get up. The final thing we needed to do before we were done with the scenario and get this achievement. But then I said what we were all thinking. Do you know what the worst part is? We're going to get these there and there's going to be a combat bit. You know that, don't you? And I couldn't have been more right. We got back to the base and as expected, we were greeted by drones, which we quickly dispatched. And then we received a communication. You have proved to be very efficient in completing your task, but we must eliminate all evidence of the ROS's actions on this Warning, moon. the ship is severely damaged. I am attempting to... An attack was imminent. We frantically scrambled to build some kind of defense, repairing turrets around the base and moving our only combat rover into position. There were eight red markers, eight ships were incoming. We had two turrets, a rover with a turret and a friendly drone with a turret and three idiots with terrible guns. If these had been the drones we'd fought against the entire campaign, we'd be fine. We'd have struggled, sure, but we'd have pushed through. But these were nothing like the drones we had faced so far. The turret destroyed, the rover obliterated, the friendly drone now only dreams of electric sheep forever. We had nothing. They tore through the buildings trying to kill us. All we could do is die and respawn, and then shoot at them with whatever ammo we respawned with, and then die again. It was a nightmare. But eventually, you wake up from your nightmares. Ah! Oh. No. oh my god. We did Finally. it. <laughs> The, the world is unloaded for me. Oh, wait, the yeah, containers aren't there. <laughs> it's all destroyed. <laughs> Look at the so rover. New. It's just wheels. <laughs> it's so <laughs> utterly new. So you'd probably expect this video to be over now, wouldn't you? Wrong. I haven't got the achievement. Me neither. So, I didn't get the achievement. It wouldn't be long before it triggered for Florius and Delta, but I didn't get it. Oh, I got a playing it cool achievement. That busy. Yeah, yeah, I got the achievement. Oh, I got it too. I uh, just need to wait. Boris had been convinced that he got the achievement when he fell into this hole. And I'm going to be honest, I was getting pretty desperate. Come here. I'm, at, I'm not at the platform. There's literally this thing here. <laughs> for like, some reason. <laughs> this is the spooky hole that you jump into to get the uh, achievement. I, I jumped into this and then I, I walked like a little bit around in it. And then I went out on the other side and then I got it for some reason. Why am I the only one not to get it? Get, jump in the hole again. Do it right. <laughs> it's not the hole. It is the hole. You gotta believe. You just did the hole wrong. <laughs> Five hours. So, I'm just gonna exit. Oh, I got it. I got it when I exited. 
Oh, there you go. oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Let's just never do this again, please. Oh my God. What an ordeal. Five hours. Five hours of pure pain. Five hours of suffering. But we finally got it. The final and most difficult achievement. Never again. You might have noticed there hasn't been a video for a few weeks, and that's because this was a monster of a project to record and edit. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to show me that you want more videos like this one. However, if you don't like waiting for new videos, this video is available for YouTube members and Patreons early, so join now for early access and other perks, or if you just want to support my content. Anyway, as always with my videos, here's a funny clip to end on. So half an hour ago, I wrote my girlfriend, I'm there in 15 minutes. Uh, so... <laughs> well, that's a good place to end the video on then, isn't it? Don't forget to subscribe and like. <laughs>